How did I get here? I have zero musical talent. When I was nine years old, I was given a musical aptitude test by the Ontario Conservatory of Music. My older brother took the same test and passed with flying colors and went on to become a very accomplished organist. Me? Well, I was told that music might not be for you. And at that time, I didn't even care. So how do you go from being branded as having no talent for music to getting to do music production on YouTube as a full-time job and ultimately installing a $100,000 mixing console into your own studio? Simple. When they tell you you're not good enough, don't believe it. As a nine-year-old, I had zero interest in music. However, when I was 14, I heard Judas Priest's Electric Eye, and that changed the course of my life. I knew I wanted to do music in some capacity, so I got my first guitar at 15, and it became apparent very quickly that I was never going to be a virtuoso. And I'm fine with that. However, when I went to college for media arts at 19, I got to mix a session on their full-size console, and I fell in love with the process. However, after graduation, surprise, surprise, nobody in the industry was hiring. Take notes, kids, that was in 1993, and it's only gotten worse. If you think college is gonna get you a job, please, for the love of crumb, do some research before you take out a loan. Now, after graduation, for me, that meant going home to Windsor. Uh, what I do with all that education? Why, roofing, of course. And then stamping bumpers. And then finally, just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, it did. Chrysler called. Here's your job. Have fun with it. And we'll see you in 30 years. Ugh. Even though I had the most mind-numbing job on the planet, I was determined to do something with music. So I started saving and reading everything I could get my hands on about recording. Recording magazine, EQ, mix, sound on sound, tape up, you name it, I read it. And in 1998, I opened my first studio. And I immediately learned that this was gonna be way harder than I ever anticipated. In 2005, I started hanging out on the Andy Sneap Forum where a really amazing bunch of creative people hung out and we all shared production tips with each other. A lot of those people who hung out on that forum all have careers now. Guys like Joey Sturgis and Lassa Lammer, bands you might've heard of like Periphery or Ailstorm. Those guys all came out of that forum. And in 2012, I put out a video on YouTube called How to Get Your Band Ready for the Studio. Originally, so forum members could share it with their clients, as I'd seen bands make the same mistakes so many times. Now, I got two reactions from that video. The first was, you're gonna ruin your business. And the second was, do more. The problem was that I had said what I wanted to say, and it took me a couple of years to figure out what to do with YouTube. But in 2014, after working as a director of photography on a local indie film and getting fired for chewing out the director for being an idiot and wasting everyone's time, I thought, okay, let's try doing this YouTube thing seriously. And the first video I released after that was Axe FX versus The Real Deal. And I have not slowed down at all since then. Fast forward to last fall and I reached out to Sweetwater and proposed the idea of doing some kind of deal on a Neve console. I got to visit the Neve guys at their facility in England last summer, and I was utterly blown away by the capabilities of the Genesis Black console. And for some insane reason, the guys at Sweetwater said, yes. Ooh, this is gonna get interesting. Oh, that is pretty big. It's down and then one piece. Yeah, that's great right there, man. Well, that went a lot smoother than the last one. That's good, that's good. Okay, time for an epic unboxing. <laughs> Just saying, you know, 21 years ago, almost to the day, I moved into this place and we built this studio over the winter of 2003. <laughs> Here we are 21 years later and I'm installing a Neve console. Never in a million years did I think I'd ever be at this point in my life. And I've got you guys to thank for it. So I am grateful for that. Wow, I got a big silver bag. They said it was very well protected. They weren't kidding, look at it. Oh boy, that's a lot of bubble wrap. And look, they even threw in a great big snack for the bass players. Yeah. 
How's it going, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> we finally got it on the stand, and yeah, wow. That took a bit of coaxing. So this is my good friend, Walter Riggy. He owns a studio just down the street. I don't know if Walter's actually been on the show or not. I'm a faithful watcher. I'm a faithful watcher. I've seen like every episode minus one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's going to give me a hand to take the plastic off this thing. I'm drooling, so hold on a sec. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I drooled again. I drooled again. <laughs> I want to do that all day. Can't wait to get this thing hooked up and start running some audio through it. One eternity later. So why go to all the trouble? Why spend all that money on something that you can do with a DAW? Because we have all heard spectacular mixes that have been done completely in software. And a lot of that software can emulate one of these. The short answer, speed. Working with a console forces me to use a certain workflow. Option paralysis is no longer a thing because I'm no longer tempted to audition 17 different EQs for 20 minutes on every single freaking channel. With the board, you get one EQ and it's top of the heap. Actually with this board, I'm gonna swap out the stock 88R EQs on the last eight channels for 1084s, which are a bit more musical and uh, will be great on guitars and vocals. Now, just sitting here, getting used to the controls and seeing how everything works, it really does allow me to rebalance a mix within seconds without having to click everything individually with a mouse. That's a massive time saver. And I've even got a touch screen here that allows me to manipulate the EQ controls uh, without even having to move out of the sweet spot. That's freaking amazing. Now, just to be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong to mixing with a mouse. I've been doing it since 1998. And if you're doing four to five projects a year, it's great. But if you have to bust out multiple mixes per week, every week, like when you're doing YouTube content, you're looking to speed things up in any way you can. And as for sonic advantages, there's pros and cons to this way of working. The board is analog, but digitally controlled. Now I explored this method of working last October with a look at the McDSP analog processing box, and I got probably the best mix of my life with it. That was super easy to work with and get great results. And it's also one of the reasons that I pulled the trigger on the knee. The other thing I've noticed is that you can really hit your outboard processing a whole lot harder than you can coming out of a digital system. Units like VCA and FET compressors like to be given a lot of signal. And when they work hard, they sound good. Now I've started working with some SSL channels and they're great, but it's like the compressors are barely engaged when you hit them with a digital signal in my Cranboard 500 ADAT. The Neve, on the other hand, lets me hit it as hard as I want, and I can set and forget my outboard and use the sends from the mixer to determine how much level things get. And the computer here makes it recallable for every single session. I recall this about 20 minutes ago, and I've just got kick, snare, and overheads going. This is just with the board processing, no reverb, no nothing going on. Check this out. Now I've had this pair of Stam 1176s over here for the last couple of years and they've been pretty good. But now that I've got them hooked in the board, I can hit them a whole lot harder. And now what they do on room mics is just, well, check this out. Wow, that's insane. And if we go back to the original mix, they're just kick and snare and overheads and we bring in those rooms crushed, check this out. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, these are the kind of drum sounds that I've been listening to on records for years and wondering why I've never been able to get them. The inherent problem with digital is that when you hit zero, you've got nowhere to go. And that means you can only turn up your output signal so far. And a compressor is only going to get so much signal. 
Here, the signal is coming out of the converter and then it gets fed through the board and amplified again on the way to the channel set. You can go way over zero and it's gonna sound good because the signal saturates instead of clips. Little side note here, when SAT came out back in 2006 or 07, something like that, it was called Software Audio Console and it was one of the first live software mixers. And a colleague of mine warned me that I'd need a much more powerful amp to run the PA because once you hit zero, you got nowhere to go. And I learned two things from my first gig doing live sound with him. Number one, he was absolutely right. And number two, musicians love to bitch about the sound at live gigs, but never want to pay anybody to actually mix for them. And that is why I don't do live sound. After doing some very basic rudimentary mixes on the Neve, it's becoming very clear as to why most of the engineers that I look up to, like Andy Sneap, Colin Richardson, and Frederick Nordstrom, still work on analog consoles. Not to mention that most of my all-time favorite albums were mixed in analog. Now, for all you guys who are working with software, let me be very clear. This is not a magic bullet. This will not automatically make your mixes sound amazing you still need a solid grasp of the basics. And knowing how to get what you want out of this thing, that comes from experience. And of course, there are some serious disadvantages to working with a console as well. First and foremost, at 300 pounds, it's heavy. It's hard to move around. The two of us barely got it in here. And then of course, there's the price. Let's put it this way. Jared Dines took his YouTube money and bought a Hellcat. Stevie T bought a McLaren. I thought about buying a nice car and then I realized I was looking at nothing but nice new cars every single day of my life for 27 years straight. So um, yeah, I think I've got my fill of that. Besides in Canada, the weather's terrible for half the year and you wouldn't want to drive one of those in the snow anyway. With a Neve, I can use it all year round and the insurance is way cheaper than what you'd pay on a Porsche 911. It all really comes down to priorities. If I get to work on a Neve, I'm more than happy to only drive a minivan. So after six days of wiring this beast up, debugging things, making sure all the signals going to where it's supposed to go, and then learning it, I've taken one of my favorite mixes that I've done in my original system and put it through this. And here's what I got. is the kind of mix I've been dreaming of getting for the last 20 some odd years. And I was able to dial that in in about two hours. And that's after coming in with knowing almost nothing about how to work this system. That's intuitive, that's great. And that helped me get the results I'm after very, very quickly. Now, if you like the guitar sound on that and would like to know how to get something like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I'm going to do a full breakdown on that in a couple of weeks and show you guys my big eureka moment when it came to getting great rhythm tones. Make sure you don't miss that one. There's going to be a lot of great information in there. If a guy who was labeled as having no musical talent at nine years old can get this far, anyone can do it as long as they apply themselves. Think in the long term. Think about your goals and how to achieve them but it will be baby steps. It's not gonna happen all at once. And above all, learn to recognize an opportunity when it comes along, because they rarely come gift wrapped. Now, I've gotta give a great big shout out to Sweetwater for making this happen. No, they did not just hand me this console. I did have to send them the biggest check I've ever written in my entire life, but they were a big help, let's just put it that way. Now, I'm gonna be clear here, I love doing this show, and I wanna put what I've made back into it and make better content for you guys. This here is going to allow me to do the audio production end of things a whole lot faster. And I got to point out that Sweetwater was absolutely fantastic when it came to getting any issues with the install of this thing sorted out. I had tons of questions and they were really great when it came to answers. And that's why I like working with them. They can handle anything from the basic beginner setup to help you get started to a top of the heap full on pro level setup like this. If you need something, contact Sweetwater and ask for Jeff Allen. He's been my sales guy for years and he's absolutely fantastic. And I've also got to give a massive thank you to everybody at Neve. They've been utterly magnificent as well. They've been very tolerant of my questions. And I'm sure they've just been rolling their eyes for the last week. Really? Isn't that obvious? <laughs> because switching over from a DAW to a console isn't as simple as one might think. My only gripe with Neve is that their software authentication on the website does need a major rethink. Seriously, guys, it shouldn't be that difficult. 
Maybe start by putting the Mac driver for the touchscreen on the freaking website so we can actually download instead of having to beg somebody to mail it to us. Really, guys, that's not a big ask. And for all you guys who go, glad you're being so mean to the Neve guys. <laughs> no, that's me being nice. That's me holding back. There were some curses uttered in here once or twice during the install. Trust me on this. Now, ultimately, my goal here is to step up my mixing game to the next level and maybe one day get to mix a major band. Maybe a group from the new wave of British metal days or maybe somebody from the San Francisco thrash scene. It'd sure be cool to get to work with Diamond Head or Death Angel or somebody like that. And yeah, it did take me a lifetime to get this far, but it's certainly been an interesting journey especially for a guy with absolutely no talent at all.